Hey, I'm Vera Stewart and welcome to the Berry Vera Show. You know, I don't know about you, but this time of year, I am so ready for football. And in my house, we start talking early in the week about what are we gonna make for the game this weekend? So I hope I'll give you some great suggestions today on things that you might not have thought about. You know, I know we all lean towards the grill when it comes time for football weather and football season. So today I've got two recipes, one that you will utilize the grill or the broiler in your oven. It's a sticky balsamic baby back rib recipe. And then finally I'm going to do a rosemary and lemon brined fried chicken. When was the last time you fried chicken? Well, you know, back in the day your mom or your grandmother would get up really early and do that. So let's get started on the ribs and what I've done prior to the show was I got my garlic minced and using a really good garlic press. So that's one of the things that's really nice to have in your drawer is a really good garlic press. So I pressed the garlic and then I took kosher salt and mixed it in with it to get a really good paste. So I'm going to add some other ingredients to this. And you know, as I look for recipes and ideas for the show, I'm really excited about some of the new cookbooks that I've found and some of the food blogs that I'm looking at. And Food 52 is one of my favorite new food blogs and cookbooks. So the recipes tonight are straight out of Food 52 Genius. So if you don't have that book, you might want to pick it up. So I've got the garlic. I'm going to add to that some more kosher salt, rosemary, brown sugar, balsamic vinegar, cayenne pepper, and black pepper. And I'm just going to rub this around. And you know, I think we're also fond of those dry rubs, but this is kind of going to give you a little bit more of a sticky-like substance to go on top of the ribs. And I'm actually only preparing half the recipe for TV, but our recipes are always available at verivera.com and the whole recipe that serves eight will be there. All right, so I went into the fresh market and picked up some wonderful baby back ribs. So I'm gonna put my handy gloves on to manage this. And then I've got a beautiful brand new, I'm christening this roasting pan tonight. Um, I almost don't want to mess it up, it's so pretty. But I'm going to go ahead and spray the pan. And this is what's going to go in the oven. And these beautiful ribs. Aren't they gorgeous? Okay, so I'm going to put one here. And then I've got the other one that's going to go like that. Now I'm just going to take this rub and I'm just going to pat it on the ribs. And this is going to marinate and just be wonderful. Just a wonderful, this is a fast and determined way of doing these ribs. You know, you're going to put it in a 425 degree oven for about an hour and three fourths. So it really does cook hard and fast, but they are going to fall apart and melt in your mouth. All right, so that looks just about right. And then, of course, I had to play with this a little bit before I came on television. So I got a recipe of this done ahead, and I took it out of the oven. And once you do, you have got a wonderful uh, sticky, crusty thing at the bottom of your roasting pan. And so I poured hot water over that and just took my wooden spoon and got all of those wonderful, good, gooey brown spots off. So now I'm going to transfer this to this pan so that we can cook down a wonderful base that we're going to use as these are cooking. So let me get my Electrolux cooktop induction and my beautiful new cookware. I'm going to add to this some more balsamic vinegar and more brown sugar. Don't you love these ingredients? And then this is just going to cook low and slow until it gets nice and sticky. So come back with me after the break. We're going to start the process of getting these glazed and in the oven and on the way to the grill.
welcome back. And you know what? I know everybody's excited about football. You know, here in the SEC, we're all about our teams, and everybody knows I'm a dog, so I have to say it. Go dogs! I'm hoping for a really great season. But as we're coming back from the break, I've let this um, balsamic glaze just cook down, and you see now that it's nice and thick and wonderful. So I am going to turn the heat off, and I'm going to transfer this to a Pyrex measuring cup. And I would have red pans, right? Of course I would. <laughs> All righty. So um, prior to the show, I had another set of ribs that I did, just like I did as we went into break, rubbing it with the wonderful um, marinade, the garlic and the brown sugar and all the wonderful ingredients. So now I'm gonna add a half a cup of water to the bottom of this pan. And I've got my oven on 425. So whether you're gonna do this under the broiler to finish it or whether you're gonna do it on your grill, you're still doing these steps. So I'm gonna cover this with foil. And this is going to go in the oven for about an hour and 45 minutes. And again, the house is going to smell wonderful, which, you know, sometimes you don't always get that aroma when it starts on the grill. So I'm gonna walk over and transfer this to the oven. Wonderful. Okay, and now we're gonna go back to the ones that I got done ahead. So these have already cooked for an hour and 45 minutes and they're just already so tender. And so what we're gonna do at this point is I'm just going to take this glaze and I'm gonna just start swabbing the ribs with this. And because I'm in the studio, of course, in my kitchen, I want to finish this off under the broiler. And when you're gonna do the broiler technique, you want your broiler rack in your oven to be three to four inches away from the heat. You don't want it to be too close, but close enough so you can get that good sear and nice um, crispness to the outside of these. The whole point is that the inside is gonna melt in your mouth and the outside is gonna have a really wonderful sticky crust. All right, so the rest of this balsamic glaze is what you're going to use as it goes through the process. If you're um, in the broiler, I would set that timer for like a third of the time, which is about um, eight minutes. You're gonna wanna go back and swab that again. On a charcoal grill, you want to do a direct heat and you want to get a good medium heat on those coals. On a gas grill, you want a medium heat and on the grills, you're probably gonna do about the same length of time, about eight minutes um, to get those just right. So just remember when you're doing this, that if there's steps ahead to make, make it where the hostess is not in the kitchen the whole time and can enjoy the game as well, you know, think of the steps that you can do in advance of this so that at the last minute, the only thing that you've got to do is run this under the broiler or throw them on the grill at the last minute. You know, I know in the South with the weather being as warm as it is, when we start football season, it could still be well up into the 90s. So nobody's really gonna want to watch TV outside. So come in, put these things in the oven, utilize your broiler or utilize that grill for the last eight minutes of the cooking time and have something really delicious when you get ready to go. All right, so come back with me after the break because we're gonna get started on a rosemary brined fried chicken. Ask Vera is brought to you by Georgia Bank and Trust and Southern Bank and Trust. Hey, it's time for my favorite part, Ask Vera. And let's see, I've got a question here from Ann DePlantis in Evans. And Ann's question is, what is the proper table etiquette when your entree could be eaten with your hands? Ann, great question, and I've got a demo for you. So on the plate, we've got three of my favorite entrees to eat with your fingers, a fried chicken leg and fried shrimp. So my first thing would be to tell you to always look at your host and hostess to take your first step from them. If they're gonna use their fingers, then you can do the same. But if you're more comfortable using a knife and fork, just remember to grip, flip, and point. 
so that you've got your index finger pointed to the ends of the utensils. You're gonna cut one bite at a time, and as you cut, you're gonna put the knife back on the right side of the plate at an angle, and then your fork cups in your hand like this. One bite at a time, and remember to never lick your fingers. Thanks, Ann, for the question. And if you have a cooking conundrum, an etiquette query, or a hospitality protocol problem, ask Vera. That's right, just send your questions to askvera at NBC26.tv. Welcome back, and we've got those ribs well on their way to being absolutely scrumptious in just a few minutes. And now we're going to talk about some fried chicken, and this is a rosemary and lemon brined fried chicken. And I know what y'all are all thinking, Vera, I don't fry chicken, I just go pick that up somewhere. But this recipe, you guys, is not that hard, and you need to try it, because I'm telling you, I did this recipe for my family, actually my son's birthday, and they went nutty over it. it. The rosemary goes all the way through it. You can taste the lemon. It's the crispiest crust ever. And I don't want to brag too much because now I've got to do it all in front of you. So we're going to get started with some plain flour that we're going to make a dredge out of. So before we get into that, let me talk to you about this brine though. A good brine on chicken especially, will really make that chicken so moist on the inside. So prior to getting ready to fry, I did a, a brine mixture. I took a little bit of oil, um, cut up some onion and flattened garlic cloves, and I sauteed that in a pan until it was nice and translucent. Then I added some kosher salt, um, let that cook through, and then fresh rosemary that I actually got out of my daughter-in-law's yard. And I added to that four cups of water and the juice of a lemon. And let that get good and, and cooked through. And then you cool that down. In the meantime, today I'm doing thighs and legs. So I cut my pieces up, put those in a Ziploc bag, poured that cold brine in it. And you can let that sit for eight hours or you can do it overnight. I did it overnight and I recommend that because I believe that's why the rosemary and lemon went through so well. So now we're ready to start frying and I'm gonna be paying attention to my pot with my oil. I've got my thermometer in there. I want it to get to about 350 degrees. So while that's heating up, we're gonna to add to three cups of plain flour, some kosher salt, and I know y'all are gonna look at these quantities. Look at all of that um, black pepper. It's three tablespoons. I'm gonna add that in. Cayenne pepper. Paprika. And cornstarch. And this, no, actually this is baking powder. Excuse me. Baking powder is what's gonna help make that crust so crispy. So I'm gonna mix this together. And this is, you know, this is where all the seasoning for that chicken is coming in. So although that seems like a lot of strong seasoning, it's what makes the crust and the actual chicken taste so, so good. So I'm going to divide, I've got three bowls laid out here, and I'm gonna divide this flour mixture between two of the bowls, because one is for the first dredge and the other one is for the last dredge. So let me incorporate that a little bit better. All right, and then in the middle bowl, I have buttermilk. All right, so I've got my area all ready to go. And on the chicken, 
Once you take it out of the brine, you want to rinse it, just pour that in a colander, and you want to rinse the chicken really well just with water. And then I laid it on a rack. This is one of the racks I use for my cookies when I make them. And then pat it good and dry with a paper towel. And my oil is just about ready, so I'm going to start the process. Um, I'm going to take one of the chicken legs, and you just want to roll this around. And actually, usually I do this like in a Ziploc bag, but believe it or not, this whole method is really, as you can see, making this flour stick to that. So I'm going to do three pieces at a time. So I'll do two legs. And then we'll do the buttermilk process. And you know, my family, um, you know, just as I prepared this recipe, I was really thinking back on actually watching my grandmother do this, watching my mother fry chicken, and somewhere along the line, we all decided that we don't do that anymore. So to be honest with you, as I was preparing these recipes for the show today, I really went back in time. I could actually smell those days back in the, you know, back in the day when, when my mother and my grandmother were doing this, and it just really brought back some fond memories. And in today's busy world, it's nice every now and then to come up with something that you can do that makes you remember all of those happy, wonderful times. Okay, so now I've taken the chicken, I've put it into the buttermilk, and this is where I might have to get my hands involved. Now I'm gonna take it back to the next flour, and this is where that really thick, wonderful crust comes from. And so now I'm gonna go ahead and place that in the oil to start frying. Let's do the thigh next. And I mean, this crust is unbelievable. So I'll dredge this through. And the thing that makes this recipe so beautiful is what I did yesterday. I finished at three o'clock. I served it for dinner and I put it in a warming box and it was like I had just fried it. All right, so I think I've got room for one more piece in there. Put that in the buttermilk. And don't try to substitute milk for buttermilk because that's part of this recipe. All right, so we're going to keep frying this. And here we go again. This is another reason people are going to want to come to your house to watch the game because when they walk in and they smell this, they're going to want to stick around. So come back with us after the break and we're going to get it all laid out and we're going to do a little sampling. all ready for football and we've got some great new recipes that I'm going to make sure you guys try because they're easy and wonderful and your house is going to smell great when everybody comes over to watch football. So while we were away from the break, I finished that fried chicken and oh my goodness, it's so absolutely beautifully golden brown. And I don't know whether you noticed or not, but those were some really large pieces of chicken. So I want to point out to you that when you're cooking fried chicken, and I went into the fresh market and the chicken pieces were just fabulous this week. Um, you want to put the lid on it about halfway through and let the steam and the heat get all the way through to the center of that chicken so you get a really good center temperature and the outside doesn't look done and the inside is raw. So just remember that if the pieces are large. But I also want to point out the beautiful red cookware um, that I used tonight is a Bialetti cookware. and. Bed Bath & Beyond is partnering up with the Very Vera Show. And you know those coupons that you get, use one of those to go purchase some of this cookware. It is fabulous on your induction uh, stove. I use an Electrolux induction here in my kitchen, but it works really well on gas and electric. So the chicken is just 
ready and just fabulous. And since rosemary was the secret ingredient, I'm gonna use a little bit of rosemary to garnish my platter. And instead of a platter, I'm using a cast iron skillet. So that just looks really scrumptious. And then on the ribs, about halfway through the broiling process, I decided to, to glaze those. And you do have a little bit of that glaze. And you might have noticed my little red devil uh, pull that I got the rack out with. This is another Bed Bath & Beyond purchase. And for me, the shortest purchase in the house, that really comes in handy when I'm trying to work with pulling racks in and out of the oven. If you've got a, a tall oven, that really comes in handy. But the ribs just fell apart when I was cutting them. They're so nice and juicy. The outside is sticky but yet crusty from the broil technique that I used in the oven. If you're using a charcoal grill or a gas grill, you're going to get that same nice crusty um, top to it. And I've decided just to use a cutting board as a platter because it's just, you know, it's a casual time. You can put this on the end of your kitchen counter and let your guests just come in. So lastly, you know, when you're eating foods like this that require your hands, we talked about that on Ask Vera, both of these would be handheld especially in a casual setting where you're using your hands to eat these things. But I want to throw out another tip since we're using cast iron. I love these little cast iron pots. And what I did, and hopefully you'll be able to see some of that steam coming out, was I rolled up bandanas, put them in water, put them on a microwavable plate, and got them nice and warm. So remember, the recipes are all available on our website at verybira.com. And remember, no matter what you do, do it in good taste, and I'll see you again next week. Mm -hmm.